Hey, it's time for more Disco Elysium. And we're talking to two old guys. They're old men. Um, I saw the statue of Philip III near the roundabout. Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed. A reminder of what Revachel once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Oh, interesting. Okay, I was curious if the numpad would actually work. Now I gotta Decisively, click it. Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded really among his subjects. Just in case he would accidentally click understood. again? That was the idea, yeah. Uh, uh... Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There's some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Uh, let's talk about something else. Right. Uh, that's about it, it looks like. Thank you for your time. Uh, I think... I think we can talk to him now. Yes, he was, he was finishing his sandwich. I have really outdone myself. He takes a bite this out of his... divine. He, he takes a bite out of a sandwich. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tisk tisk, it's a little pleasure. Life doesn't need to be a... a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance of this fine day? Uh, tell me, what do you know about the dead man? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Uh, come on. You must have heard... something. No, officers. I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are both good guys. I can see that. Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Respects? Ooh. That what? Just the, the old carabineer don't, I uh, can't believe what he's hearing. Uh, okay, okay you were just going to do that. Oh, okay, yep, sorry. Yep. Yeah, sounds a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. I'm not even any... Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick, he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you <laughs> piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the Union. I just know Everhart. And who is this Everhart you know? Everhart Claire. Everyone in Martinez knows the Claire brothers. I taught these boys human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. Let's try not to get caught in a crossfire. Uh, uh, are you a uni member? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. Everhart, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. So you're not an actual member? Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card, 
But Evra keeps me on the payroll. Just for the little things. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate this socialist rabble. But even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence. Never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are these little things you do for Everard? Writing work mostly. Occasionally, he needs something written and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez and how things are and how they could be. Evart and I have this long talks where... Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Oh, uh, bye for now. Oh, but I want a sandwich. No. Aww. Oh, no sandwich. No sandwich. No sandwich. Why? We asked for salami before. But, but this is the guy's sandwich that he's already eating. It's not like we could bite the other end. Uh, bye for now. Aw, no fun. Okay, let's. Uh... Hey, we can get in the door here. If we want to go explore this now, it's open. Uh, uh, so where to? Uh, let's go investigate the dead body. Walkie dokie. Hey Kudo, you still here? He's still here, throwing rocks at the body. There he still is, looking right through you. With his white eyes, mm, only the body a 28% below chance. is entirely dedicated uh, to that let's try it. Emitting it is all. Hey! 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 Double sixes too. Perfect. The odor of death is still stronger. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run, and your stomach to ring itself empty. With your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Oh, uh, what was the chance? Just wondering. Uh... Uh, we needed 14, mm. and we had a plus one on that. Ah! Oh. And we got a, more than what we needed. <laughs> yes! Plus, we had already a plus four just because endurance is at level four. Awesome! Uh, do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The uh cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. There you go, there's your belt. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Is there anything we can move, we can use to improve Inland Empire? Uh, not currently, unless it's through dialogue, but no clothing anyway. Are you sure? I'm positive. We only have those gloves and the other one that boosts, um, what was it? Conceptualization. Oh, okay. Then let's ask him, tell me, who are you, dead man? The corpse. Is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Who is he? He is male, 4250, with an athletic build. 
Back off. The corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes uh, like a shark. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. What kind of boots are these? They are armor, no boots. Technically speaking, these are sabatons. Okay then, what kind of armor is this? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Uh, uh, knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Uh, the material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. That draws a line in the con condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary is deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much we... How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Ooh! ka baby! By ka do you mean let's not log them as evidence? Let's steal them? No, no. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. Of course. The lieutenant oh. nods often. We wait, wait, this unplastic expression. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Communicating both professionalism and sarcasm. This time, the latter. Okay, I was just about to say, what does breakthrough moment mean? But it means I you finish the thought. Yeah, it just dawned on me, and then I'm like, oh, probably. Uh, where's the rest of it? Sca scavenged by locals? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these species. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. If you wear uh those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. Why does my mortal coil need protecting? Yes, bullets will fly. They always do. And the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Maybe he was just wearing these boots because there's no need for armor? No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. He seems to be walking around naked. Just like this for all we know. A good point. He could have been intoxicated. Or something we cannot yet imagine. I shouldn't have assumed so much just from the clothes. Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Uh... I'll grab the boot under your arm. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Lieutenant's voice is sharp. He looks at you with the boot under your arm. Pig's gonna pull his head off. I'm breaking 
Jutsu! What? Even the mongrels can see you're about to put his head off. Do it, homo! I'm not a homo! Stop obsessing about your sexuality, <laughs> officer. You're about to seriously compromise the coroner's case. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Uh, <laughs> this is advanced enemy technology! We should conduct research into their weaknesses! This is not the enemy. This is the deceased, the victim, in a murder investigation. You're right. That makes sense. It does make sense, doesn't it? Besides... Lieutenant taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? You're sure there's a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Are we accepting pulling the boot? Are we still a dead man boot? That would be dishonorable. You would be accepting the idea of trying to get the boots at some point. Okay, so... Um, or steal refusing a dead that. Man? Okay, steal a dead man's boots, that would be dishonorable. <sighs> I'm disappointed with you. You think way too much. I, it's interesting because you played this in a way I would never play this. Like, you you are fusing yourself into, like, the lot... Uh, not, I don't want to put this. You seem to be putting yourself in, like... The culture, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Like, the culture of the world of, would this be wrong to do? Is this morally unacceptable? Whereas for me, it's like, what opportunities does this give me if I do get them? I'm not trying to convince you either way. I'm just, I'm just noticing a difference between the way you think and the way I think when it comes to a game like this. Okay, okay. Um, That would be dishonorable. Refuse right, for your honor. You can pay the hostel bill in honor points. How many honor points have you collected? There are honor points? Of course there aren't. Don't be naive. You still feel as though there might be some honor points. And if there are, you've surely earned one. <laughs> okay, got it. Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? How did the, how did the man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company, but that's just hearsay. Okay, makes sense. No, your first instinct was correct. This equipment is way beyond what a security guard can afford. Uh, back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities uh blotched pink and blue. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. Uh, what was that? Word? Vermilion, in yellow letters, along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Only a deep longing for vermilion golden spirits lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. Huh, I... This is a bad... This I... is a bad time for a drink, right? I did not get this one because my electrochem was not high. Extremely. Uh, what kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a harbor? Yes, it looks like they use whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. Uh, we're assuming dock workers from the harbor did this? I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? I 
think this is the point where you could convince Kim it's a dark, sexy mystery. Uh, I feel like it was something else. Yes, it often is. This bed worries me. No, maybe not. Maybe uh, it's not this one. Or, or maybe my stats aren't high enough for a dark, sexy I, mystery. It could be that we didn't, it was one of those invisible rolls. It could very likely be that, too. Okay, um, how do they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle above, a uh, buckle trying the branch, the belt of the branch above. Do they get, do they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Uh, they want to make sure they, and they they should want him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester; it's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than twenty strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp, and torso covered in tattoos. Uh, inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. Ah. Uh... What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Your fist clenches suddenly. It will be riddled with disco! Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. The pattern does not stir patriotic or religious sentiment in you. What it does is speak to the wounded, limping animal, the male in particular, unable to communicate in anything more than grunts. It's impossible to tell if his advice is right or wrong. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let the, uh, let the lieutenant work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and, still, and clicks them together. And clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, then... A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Cool machine! Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. So that, that, mm -hmm. will we have an opportunity just to take a, a picture of some random crap? I have no idea because I did not run into anything that needed a picture when I was playing. Okay, because just that use it wisely yes. is it, it very much feels my head. like there's going to be an option at some point to use it again. I haven't run into it yet. <laughs> Okay, what do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. 
The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Oh, uh, can I have it? I should look at it later. Without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. I totally won't pawn it for cigarettes. <laughs> he hands you a oh. piece of rolled up auto paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy eyed corpse looks by. His uh, mouth mute squid and, and take a step his back. skin as colorful as the. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Only the Observe. lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Stop. <laughs> what am I doing? Stop. Why am I doing it? Stop. Relax your eyes. The cadaver slowly twists on the car. Uh, so how do we His get him down? Covered in tattoos. <laughs> Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Stops to think and uh, checks his notes. We've been through. Do we have plans for getting him down? Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Uh, we could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Uh, maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah, bang bang time pig, shoot his head off. How? Uh, I don't know, just shoot up there maybe? Not shoot the belt? Uh, point up towards the branch. Yes, the buckle, where it ties the cargo belt to the tree. If the shot hits that, then there might be a small chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Actually... Don't. It has bad idea written all over it. I can tell you right now, it can work. Oh! It can okay. work. It can. Yep. Take the shot, Lieutenant. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the word? Oh. Take, it. take the shot! Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the Lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his it eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Easy does it, partner. He's gonna fucking miss! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Fucking idiot! Move goodbye, asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano cloud. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. When I say I can't uh, succeed, I mean you can succeed. Oh, oh, could I have the gun? Maybe I can try? It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs, and proceeds to, hand, uh, proceeds to load the pistol at. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. They only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. 
Uh, take the gun. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani boyka. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively uh, resting uh, on the trigger. Improve hand-eye coordination. Uh, I could do that, I believe. Do, wait, Thank do you want to do that right now, or wait until we figure out what the roll will be? Uh, yes, that would be bad. That, that would be bad. Let's find out what the roll will be. I think you're right that it's hand-eye, but I'd like to make sure. Okay. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your uh, finger. Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your it is hand mouth? Eye. At least you uh, pointed at her. Uh, uh, close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying. Uh, You're gonna cry now, fucking faggoty. Uh, uh hand eye coordination. Alright. Wrong one. Hand eye, level it up. Yes. Which puts us at a forty two. Basically a fifty fifty. Or just about. Uh uh If we fail the uh, It's just the same thing that happened to Kim. It doesn't uh, nothing goes okay. horrifyingly wrong. Oh, even with double ones. Uh, yeah, even with double ones. Okay, let's do this. Ah. Ah. Damn. A plume of smoke erupts from what the barrel. What was it that we got? We were too short. From okay. The explosion. Uh. With your ears still ringing, you lower the weapon to see what happened. So here's here's the downside. Yes. We're going to need help to get it down, and that means taking a side, from what I recall. Taking a side? Either siding with the Union or siding with Wild Pines, where we were, you know, talking about uh, the girl uh, in the boat. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. You missed the belt, but hit the Or could we just chest. leave it up? Bit do we need the body down? Eventually we do. No um, I don't Only know if there's another sludge option later on. Belly. But eventually, yeah, like, we can't leave it up for now. Water. Okay. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry! I knew it! What a molko! Ask for another shot. You'll get it with the next one. The goddamn light reflected off some window. Surely. I don't want to do this anymore. This is boring. Start crying. <laughs> I agree. Police work is overrated. It is trying and stressful. However, it is still our job to get the dead body down from the tree. Takes the sidearm from you and holsters it. It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot. It's your pig hands. Man, those those hooves really don't grip that gun well. Uh, pig stuff. Yeah. Hey, she called it. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Kuno has hands. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. We should entrust Kuno with the service weapon. He can shoot it down. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't imagine that goes well. No, Kuno. Uh, if I can shoot him down, no one can. I Like, one, I don't think Kim's ever going to let you do that. Two, it'd be freaking hilarious if for some reason he did, and it would probably go terribly wrong. <laughs> no, Kuno. If I can... Okay. No, I, I was gonna pick it. I was just saying, like, it'd be fucking hysterical. We still need okay. to get him down somehow. His stone is grown tired now, and stretches to make the stretch. Uh, the stench makes him turn away from the corpse. But how? With our knife. 
the bad way, the way I didn't want us to. <sighs> By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools but and the men. We get if they put him up there, they can take him down too. But how do we get inside the harbor? From the gates. By negotiating or fighting. Or we can try the secret route we found, where your cloak is. It looked to ever. To the gates. Let, Let's fight. Let's I say. go up and to the secret route. Let's get to it then. Uh, what is. Oh, this is the thing, isn't it? Some kind of superstar. Okay. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. Ooh. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die, in a cool voice. You people have no idea how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists, or prime ministers, or prophets. And you're the first one. Minus one logic, price of self-delusion. But the learning caps for visual calculus, suggestion, electrochemistry, and composure raised to six. Ooh, except. Here's the other one. And white morning. Oh, weird. It didn't go. All right. Uh, and the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in the matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning. A modern death. Divorce or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller. Make him less you. All motorics have been raised one level, and we can zoom out more. Ah! Oh. Uh, we sell a 15th Indo tribe, which, if I recall correctly, is one that gives you one XP uh, for each of those little blue green dots we hit. Uh, and what's the money one? The money one we have to talk to Joyce about. Um, actually, no. Okay. We, have, we have to talk to what's her face? Um, 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 uh, Lena, the the one in the in the whirling. woman at the docks. No, woman in the whirling. Then we go to the docks. Okay. She'll refer us there. Okay. Okay. So, do we want to internalize this one or no? Uh, we'll oh, we don't have a slot. We'd have to unlock a slot first. I thought, uh, oh. I thought these were unlocked already. Nope. Oh. Okay, so we'll hold on to that. And um, next time on Disco Elysium, we will be talking to the boss man? Uh, either that. Or we could always get back into the bookshop here that we were talking about before, because that's open now. Uh, maybe we will talk to the boss man first, and then the bookshop? I mean, sure, if nothing goes horribly wrong. Okay, so, we'll catch everybody then, which I might change my mind between then <laughs> and... Oh. Alright, catch everybody later. See us.